welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Clive Myrie. In the news this week, as a head of HR draws up a P45 notice, a particularly cruel meme about Liz Truss arrives on his phone at just the wrong time. After a sharp rise in the cost of ingredients, one customer is furious as all the piri-piri dishes are dropped from his local Nando's. Gone, 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 right? And away from the pressures of government for the first time in years, Quasi Quarteng can finally be himself again. suggests he could balance anything. <laughs> on Ian's team tonight is a journalist for The Spectator who recently appeared on the reality show Make Me Prime Minister. Well, I think over the coming weeks we might all get a turn. <laughs> Please welcome Katie Balls. <laughs> and on Paul's team tonight is a comedian in a flat monotone, one at a time, with long pauses in between. In those days, that made her an alternative comic. Today, it would make her Prime Minister. <laughs> Please welcome Joe Brand. <laughs> now, we begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Just one between you this week. Take a look at this. This is the last Prime Minister but three. <laughs> He's always been a bell end. <laughs> Runners and riders yep. uh, for the next Prime Minister. They're all disappearing. This is documentary footage from the voting chamber in the Commons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Boris Johnson's coming back. <laughs> I suppose this is just the unbelievable news that Liz Truss was Prime Minister. <laughs> and now she's gone. In fact, her whole career was one enormous U turn. She walked into Downing Street and then she walked. <laughs> Out again. She didn't drag it out. No, no, no. They dragged her out. Yeah. She did 45 days. And that doesn't include the mourning period of the Queen. So just think what she achieved in 35 days. They seem to keep doing shorter times per go. Yeah. So... Prime Minister, the victory speech will be something along the lines. I'm very pleased to have become Prime Minister of this country, and that's why I'm tending my resignation. <laughs> <laughs> Did you notice, though, so, that when she's, like, giving her resignation speech, she's sort of weirdly smiling quite a lot? I thought, oh, she's got Christmas Strictly. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching when she resigned, and the pound actually recovered during her resignation. <laughs> and I thought, if internationally the markets prefer no Prime Minister <laughs> to you then it's the end of the game, isn't it? We've had the result of quite a sophisticated political experiment. What do you uh, think that was? What, Brexit? <laughs> Is it um, trying out Ekin Sue from Love Island? <laughs> <laughs> it was the Daily Star's experiment to see what lasted the longest. Oh, you said they bought a lettuce, didn't they? Liz Truss or the Daily Star lettuce. No, sorry, which is which? It, yeah. You're confusing me. <laughs> you might take letters a bit more seriously because I, I checked today and it's 500 to 1 currently to be the next Prime Minister. Yeah, but is it time for Boris to make a miraculous return? No, of course it is. You imagine the Tory party will have learnt its lesson. You're not seriously going to propose him to come back. That seems to me almost mad enough for them to do it. <laughs> Lots of MPs with quite rose-tinted glasses, I think, thinking, oh, you know what, I might have sent a letter to get rid of him, but he didn't hurt my mortgage. Right. So maybe it's worth another shot. Yeah, so having someone who's a liar is better than someone who's a liability. <laughs> I don't buy it. Katie, I wonder, how can they justify another leadership election? Yeah. <laughs> Tory MPs looking at the polls, 
They're not about to vote for a general election. Lots of them like the idea of being opposition for a couple of years, but if yeah. you go to the a general election, about 19% in the polls, most of them are not going to be in the opposition. They're going to be in the job centre. Yeah. 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 Okay, well, here's how ITV's Tom Bradby summed up the shenanigans on Wednesday. Shenanigans? The Deputy Chief Whip was reported to have left the scene saying, I'm absolutely effing furious, I just don't effing care anymore, before he resigned, along with the Chief Whip, the unresigned. The Home Secretary has, however, definitely gone. <laughs> now, those shenanigans yeah. were Wednesday night, Ian, right? Yes. And what were the shenanigans? Well, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the Home Secretary resigning? Nutella. As... <laughs> She's known on the moderate wing of the party. <laughs> now, no, that's very cheap. Her name's Cruella. <laughs> I mean, for some reason, she was Home Secretary. God knows why. And now she isn't anymore because she leaked um, a letter to a member of the public, so she broke... The ministerial code? I thought if you breached the code, you had to be deported to Rwanda. <laughs> she used her private email, that's the suggestion. Yes. Yahoo, said Grant Shapps. <laughs> it might end up being the shortest serving Home Secretary ever, because whoever wins presumably bring in their own Home Secretary, so he might have been Home Secretary for less than a week. And given he was her chief critic at the conference, and then she gave him the job. Well, she sacked him, didn't she? Yeah. yeah. As, uh, a lot, at the beginning of her premiership, but, you know, memory fades. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've undersold the shenanigans, though. That... Probably the most chaotic it's been. It's almost a cross between a rugby scrum, I think, in the voting lobby and handbags at dawn. <laughs> well, Katie, you were right. I mean, there were chaotic scenes in the Commons on Wednesday night as MPs fought, they cried and they swore. Jacob Rees-Mogg was alleged to be at the heart of the melee, while according to the Times, one MP was manhandled by Therese Coffey. She'd just taken someone else's steroids and was feeling jacked. <laughs> Can you imagine the pleasure, though, of being sandwiched between Therese Coffey and Jacob Rees-Mogg? My sexual fantasy, that is. <laughs> The government had declared that any Tory MP who voted against the fracking bill would have the party whip removed. So who rebelled? Last time round, they actually promised that they wouldn't do fracking. So it's, it's not quite clear which mandate this is. Is this the Tory election mandate or Liz Truss's fantasy mandate that got the pensioners in Bournemouth so excited at cocoa time? Yeah, if, if you voted with the government, you were going against a government manifesto commitment. Right. If that helps simplify things. Totally clear. <laughs> <laughs> well, some big names did abstain. Pretty Patel, Quasi Quarteng. Here's the full list actually coming up. As you can see, it also includes Liz Truss. <laughs> Passes don't work. That's what they said. Yes, Liz Truss, she forgot to swipe her pass. Be careful how you say that. Um, well, it was a night of high emotions. No question about that. We've called it shenanigans. Um, who else got a bit blue that night? Christian Goo and Murthy? Yes. He got caught in an unguarded moment, for those who don't know, following a testy interview with Steve Baker. Thanks, for course, Steve. It wasn't a stupid question, Steve. You know it. I'm very happy to go up against you on trust any day. <laughs> what a <laughs> Why were we looking at a policeman as we were hearing that? We looked like the policeman was a particularly skilled ventriloquist. <laughs> Yeah, that was it. <laughs> it began with a C. Cabbage? Yes, was it? Something yes. like that. Yeah. Conservative, unionist, national <laughs> treasure. <Yeah. laughs> oh, my word. What do you think the foreign media are making of all of this? Never mind Krishna Guru Murthy. They're, They're having having laughing, aren't they? Apparently, we used to have quite a good reputation in the world. Well, yeah. we can find out what they think. Let's find you... out. British media suggests that Prime Minister Liz Truss' cabinet can collapse shortly. 
Uh, her position is, uh, is so, is so uh, clearly on an edge, it sparked this question. Can Liz Truss outlast the 10-day shelf life of a lettuce? <laughs> Woraufhin dann der stellvertretende Fraktionschef das Parlament mit den Worten verließ, I'm fucking furious, I don't know. I'm sure that's what she meant to say. Yeah. Um, what eroded Liz Truss's foundations early on in the week? The fact that she was completely useless. <laughs> when Jeremy Hunt junked the almost entirety of her not so mini budget. Indeed. Who else is rumoured to be in line for the role of Chancellor? I thought they were sticking to Hunt. Some people say he's a bit too old for the job, that he's an antique hunt. <laughs> <laughs> Some people were saying Sajid Javid uh, ah, might be picked as Chancellor, yes. but then Downing Street appeared to take quite a strong view on that rumour. Uh, they're quite a strong who view. Who is Downing Street? According <laughs> <laughs> to a government source, when someone mentioned him as a possible replacement for Kwasi Kwarteng, the Prime Minister laughed out loud at the suggestion. The source added, she has sat in the cabinet with Javid for 10 years and she knows who is good and who is shit. <laughs> And now so does everyone else. <laughs> Here's the Saj being surprised at a Pelican Crossing near Parliament this week. Do you think that Liz Truss yeah. looks safer now? Or it's very nice to see you. Jeremy Hunt looked very Prime Ministerial behind that desk this morning, didn't he? Yeah. Lovely to see you. What we heard from Jeremy Hunt earlier on, he nice sounded very much like Rishi Singh. <laughs> 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 All right, see you later. <laughs> he was waiting to cross. Mm. So obeying the rules, he'll never be Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs> what else did Miss Trust probably regret this week? Speaking like a robot. <laughs> she sounds like a sort of malfunctioning robot midwife, doesn't she? Because <laughs> she just goes, deliver, deliver. <laughs> I think if she'd made normal expressions with her face instead of going... <laughs> People would have actually been a bit warmer to it. Now, if she was a robot, she'd possess artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing she probably regrets this week is sending her political rival, Penny Morden, to Parliament in her place to answer an urgent question from Labour. Mr Speaker, with, with, apologies, with apologies to the Leader of the Opposition and the House, the PM is detained on urgent business. <laughs> The Prime Minister is not uh, under a desk. <laughs> as soon as you raise that image, we know she was. <laughs> well, who else was disrespected by a colleague in Downing Street this week? I'll tell you. Yes. Sky News' is Tamara Cohen uh, was trying to have a two-way conversation with Kay Burley. Have a look. A couple of days ahead in which her authority is going to be very much tested. Um, she's got what's going to be another tricky performance in Parliament tomorrow uh, with Keir Starmer. And then as we head later in the week, there's going to be questions about what what cuts to departmental budgets are yeah. going to be put forward. Yeah. <laughs> so rude. Uh, how was Liz Truss's fate ultimately decided by a curry? The Tory MPs plotting against a uh, met in an Indian restaurant? Is it a Commons office? Because there's an MP who backed Rishi Sunak, who has been having lots of takeaways on hospitality in his office. And I had a Tory MP say to me, it basically become a bistro. Um, <laughs> and that was where there was a big curry to talk about the future. Yeah. The antitrust MPs apparently discussed a plot to oust her this week over a curry, leading the Sun to label them the Balti Bandits. <laughs> refer to it as the Poppadon plot, <laughs> which would explain this headline, Man Finds Boris Johnson in His Chicken Coma. There it is. <laughs> this is the news, of course, that Liz Truss is a quitter, not a fighter. 
person who deserves the most sympathy is, of course, Liz Truss's husband, Hugh, who at some point during dinner last night must have bravely said, OK, Liz, but could we talk about my day? <laughs> MP was roughed up outside the division lobbies. I imagine he ended up with his eyes to the right and his nose to the left. <laughs> <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, to round two, the one-armed bandit of news. Fingers on the buzzers, teams. Here's the first one. Is it about the protesters on Dartford Bridge this week? Yes, it was blocked by a pair of Just Stop Oil protesters who scaled the suspension bridge. Here they are. Now, some commuters tried to encourage them to come down by firing fireworks at them. <laughs> and despite that, they remained up there for 37 hours. And coming down asked, who's won, Liz or the lettuce? <laughs> what did the protesters do in an art gallery? As well. Oh, they threw some tomato soup at Van Gogh's sunflowers. Uh, Apparently, they regretted it in hindsight. <laughs> yes, Joe, as part of a protest at the government's approach to fossil fuel policy, here's the moment it happened. <laughs> shocking. Absolutely shocking. <laughs> Afterwards, they glued themselves to the gallery wall before being removed by specialists. <laughs> who came armed with anti-adhesive and some croutons. <laughs> what other protest was in the news this week? Oh, well, there was a, a Hong Kong yeah. dissident yeah. Um, who was protesting outside the Chinese consulate in Manchester mm -hmm. and quite rightly was taken inside and beaten up. <laughs> I mean, really, you can't have people protesting about dictatorial regimes in Britain. I don't know what they were thinking of. I think we should get the Red Army in <laughs> and basically patrol the streets. And anyone who doesn't agree with the government should literally be killed. Do you want to be Home Secretary? I do. <laughs> one of the men involved is one of China's most senior UK diplomats. He's Consul General Zheng Shiwan, who told Sky News that it was his duty to rip hair from the scalp of the protester. Now, here's one of his victims. <laughs> Finally, would you like to see an energy-saving tip that went viral this week? Yeah. Not yeah? really. No. <laughs> You're right. going to get it anyway. This is from TikTok. Boil in the kettle to make a cup of tea. After I do the ironing, I like to use the water from the iron to fill the cup up. And then I pop it in the microwave for 15 seconds. It's also a great way to recycle the water from the iron. You're telling me some bloke's doing the ironing? I don't believe you. <laughs> this is the ongoing series of protests by Just Stop Oil campaigners. The two young activists threw soup over a famous painting. Many people have likened it to vandalism. Not a Dutch painter I'm familiar with. <laughs> now, fingers on buzzers, teams. Here's the next one. Oh, this is dogs can sense our mood. They can smell incompetence. They must have been barking their heads off for the last 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> but they smell incompetence. They can tell if somebody, yep. so, you know, if they walk into uh, uh, operating theatre and somebody's performing open heart surgery, <laughs> they can tell immediately whether the surgeon knows what he's doing or she knows what he's doing or doesn't. Yep. <laughs> This is the news that man's best friend may be more judgmental than we might have realised. So what do dogs know about us then? We'll never know because they can't tell us. <laughs> a new study who a competent person opening the lid of a box. Dog, competent person opening the lid of a box. <laughs> and the person opening the box, dog. <laughs> but then the competent person was followed by an incompetent person failing to open the lid. Well, the dog reliably chose to trust the competent person to feed them over the incompetent one. Uh, honestly, this sounds like complete bollocks. <laughs> 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 That's compelling evidence. Ah, compelling evidence. To suggest that cats 
can make a similar judgment about oh, people. Oh, can they? Oh, well, well, hang on, hang on. Oh, he's got compelling evidence. Thank you. Take a look at compelling evidence. out incompetence there. Which dogs do you think are actually better? Border Collies, Alsatians, Labradors. Female dogs strongly prefer competent people compared to male dogs who, even when they detected someone was incompetent, didn't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Which breed has recently seen a huge boom in popularity? The King Charles the, the Third Spaniel. <laughs> Question of one now. <laughs> No, yeah, it's, the, it's the lovely Corgi. Oh. Yes, the Kennel Club announced that since the Queen's death, registrations have reached a 30-year high. They're quite bad-tempered, aren't they, Corgis? Apparently the Queen's Corgis used to quite regularly have a little snap at people. But they've been taken over by Prince Andrew. That's how they do it a lot, then. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the roles he's been allowed to keep. Keeper of the dog. <laughs> Someone's checking on them. <laughs> yeah, we don't want a grooming scandal, do we? <laughs> oh. What breed has not had the same luck as the Corgi? Dalmatian. No, no, no. It's sadly the King Charles Spaniel. The situation was so bad, its picture was featured on the front of the Times. There it is. <laughs> Well, either that or the Conservative Party are planning to go rogue with their next leader. <laughs> the number of King Charles Spaniels is declining. This is despite their popularity this week at the Discover Dog Show, where, according to the Times, visitors were enchanted as one King Charles Spaniel only thinking, this stinking pen. <laughs> Okay, time for the odd one out round. Your four are Jeremy Clarkson, Nigel Farage, King Charles III, and Elon Musk. Jeremy Clarkson, he's had to close down his branded um, tea room. King Charles has had to get rid of the Duchy of Cornwall stuff, I suppose, so his biscuits have gone out the window. Um, <laughs> Nigel Farage, I, something about him producing his own gin or something like that, Farage's gin. Mm -hmm. um, and Elon Musk, I'm not sure, I mean, it might be leather jackets, it might be cars, it might be space modules. <laughs> he didn't launch a perfume. He did. It was called... Musk. <laughs> Well, it's to do with spin-offs. They're all trying to make some money on the side. Apart from Jeremy Clarkson, who can no longer make money from his cafe and restaurant. Right. Because the eateries were opened without planning permission. That's right. Clarkson has been ordered to remove all tables and furniture, including children's high chairs. So where am I supposed to sit now? Asked the visiting Richard Hammond. <laughs> Nigel Farage has put his name to red, white, and blue Cornish gins. Here's the gin. <laughs> I'm just wondering what the tasting notes for Nigel Farage's gin are. Bitter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I suppose, I mean, you know, what is he going to promote? Toss pot tonic. <laughs> <laughs> What's King Charles's new alternative income stream? Oh, it's plastic bags full of cash. Oh, no. <laughs> he is selling off the Queen's racehorses. Can you name any that are being sold? Dobbin. <laughs> OK, there's Pile Driver, which the Queen named after her favourite status quo album. Or Prince Philip, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, my job is to come and lower the tone on this. <laughs> I, I think I'm doing really well. Elon Musk released his burnt hair fragrance via his online shop, BoringCompany.com. Not to be confused with BoringCompany.co.uk, which is, of course, Keir Starmer's website. <laughs> In other news, what product has Dolly Parton released to make some extra money on the side? She's written a novel. That's not it, though. I think line, which includes a blonde wig for dogs. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, I don't know what breed of dog that is, but he's in trouble. <laughs> uh, 
and here it is on a live model. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round. We're going to start with man sets world record for what in 30 minutes? Doing the ironing. <laughs> Man sets world record for eating 21 sausage rolls in 30 minutes. John Dawes ate a sausage roll every 100 seconds. It was a huge achievement, but it really annoyed the other mourners at the wake. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would do, it would do. Next, people in Iceland stunned after what? They fell into the fridges. <laughs> they went to waitress. <laughs> People in Iceland stunned after country starts using different font on street signs. Oh. Yes, here are the two different signs with their different fonts. I'd be stunned by that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iceland, of course, is known for its hot geezers. There's one. World's funniest parrot is what? Greedy bastard. <laughs> World's fattest power is uh, to go on diet. Yeah. Don't want to do it. Don't want to do it. <laughs> World's fattest parrot is banned from Bird of the Year contest. Oh, I was banned from that as Were well. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a shame. Such a final score are. Ian and Katie have five. Paul and Joe have eight. No. Well on which note we say thank you to our panellists Ian Hislop and Katie Balls, Paul Merton and Joe Brand. And I leave you with news that in London it's clear just how desperate Downing Street were after evidence emerges of number 10 attempting to bring back George Osborne. <laughs> after another round of intense Premier League action, Jurgen Klopp denies that he's becoming overstressed.